Well, good morning. It's me, Kenny Polcari, your host of the party. And today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. And here are the things that you need to know to get your day started. So you got to ask yourself, yesterday was CPI day. So did the CPI change the narrative? Uh, not so much. So the question is, will today's PPI change the narrative? Mm, not so much. But the FOMC rate decision at 2 o'clock with the dot plot at 2.30 may, in fact, change the narrative. The CME Fed Watch is now suggesting a May rate cut rather than the March cut. Hmm, interesting how that happens. Oil gets pummeled as supply is growing faster than demand. And what do we have for dinner tonight? Well, it's a dessert. It's the candy pecans. We'll get to that in a moment. So the CPI came in mostly as expected, right? Other than one data point, the top line CPI month over month number that was expected to come in flat came in at up one tenth of a percent. Now, not a huge deal, but certainly not what they wanted. The other reads for the CPI came in just as expected, right? The the ex-food and energy, the year-over-year, -year, all that stuff, just as expected. On the wage front, we get average hourly earnings month over month up a tenth in line with last month's, but the year-over-year -year number came in up a half a percent versus last month's zero percent, which also suggests ongoing upward pressure on wages. So while I'm not ringing the alarm bell, I'm just making it clear that it ain't over till the fat lady sings and she ain't singing just yet. Now, the 30-year bond auction went off without a hitch, and as expected, though, buyers were willing to buy, but they demanded higher yields, which means they wanted slightly lower prices. So while the 30-year in the market was yielding 4.29%, the auction demanded the rate as high as 4.344%. Again, not a disaster, but it is a sign of caution. In any event, traders and algos continue to take stocks higher as they want to believe that the Fed will do what they want which is the cut rates, leaving the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ to end the day at yet another new 2023 closing high. At 4 p.m., the Dow is up 174 points or half a percent. The S&P up 21 points, up a half a percent. The NASDAQ gaining 100 points, up seven tenths. The Russell lost two tiny points, not a big deal. And the transports added 20 points, while the S&P equal weight gained 11 points. Now, recall that this recent push higher, right, the 16% plus move on the S&P since October 30th, was because of the idea that today's FOMC press conference, that JJ was going to lean dovish, that he was prepared to announce cuts as soon as March 2024, which is three months away. It's illogical to me. And it's, uh, and it's headlines like this from the Business Insider, which is supposed to make you think somehow that they have inside information, helps to create and feed this beast. So the other day they came out with a headline and said, the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates six times in 2024 as the economy shows clear signs of cooling down. Quote, ING says. Now, the first thing is ING is a Dutch financial services firm that's trying to create a buzz, right? I mean, is anyone really paying attention to what ING uh, says? Right when when you want when you want your inside info is ING your broker of choice, and then six times really, and where do they get that from? Right, this insider info book they get it from a survey, and not a survey of Fed members. It was a survey of economists and others, people that have no skin in the game. So let's be clear: no one at the Fed ever said such a thing, nor would they even be that specific. But it is a headline like that that creates a drama. Why? Because the smart logic algos that do nothing but scrape the headlines looking for that little edge, right, to react. And when the headline sounds bullish, they, 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 they create buy orders and they spray the market. And when the headline sounds bearish, they create sell orders and they spray the market. But it's headlines like this that create that FOMO, right, that fear of missing out. And by the way, it works both ways, right? Just go back to early October. Do you remember all the negative headlines that send stocks tumbling, right? Those headlines create a different fear, though. It's the fear of being left behind holding the bag, right? F-O-B-L-B-H-T-B. Yeah, okay. How'd that work out for you as a long-term investor that tries to pick tops and bottoms? Which is why I say you need to eliminate the noise as a long-term investor and focus on the long-term end goal. Now, Today, this morning at 8.30, we're going to get the latest PPI read, right? And that's expected to also show ongoing slowing inflation, which is good. 
But prices, remember, are still rising just at a slower pace. And a key takeaway is going to be is, um, is the FOMC meeting at 2 o'clock, right? We're going to get the announcement at 2 p.m. where nothing's going to happen. By now, you should know that they are leaving rates on hold, right? They're not raising, they're not lowering, they're just leaving on hold. And as I've been saying, I expect that JJ is going to push back on the expectation of any rate cut in March. And in fact, the CME FedWatch is now agreeing. I mean, he is the Fed chair. He has made it very clear. You just need to listen to what he says. And so what he says is it's too early to speculate on when the central bank will start reducing rates. So just to be clear, that's not unclear, is it? Now, look, as my friend Lindsay Piega says, chief economist over at Stifle, Stifle Nicholas, what she says is the goal of the messaging will be we're not going to prematurely ease. They have seen head fakes on inflation. And while the Fed has made progress, there's more progress to be made. Bingo, Lindsay. Thank you for saying that. So the dramatic headline put out by the Business Insider is just that, dramatic. But it's all about clickbait, and that's a whole other story, so we'll get into that on another day. Now, the other dramatic data point today is going to be all about the dot plot. That's when each member of the Fed FOMC committee anonymously makes takes their pencil and makes a little dot on the graph piece of paper, right? Very sophisticated which reveals what they expect interest rates to be both in 2024 and 2025. They keep it anonymous, so this way no one knows who thinks what, and so that they can, that any one person can change his or her mind if the data changes without being branded as a flipper. Bloomberg is reporting that they expect the median projection to, to show uh, two rate cuts in 2024 and then five more in 2025. But they qualify this statement by attaching this comment. But there's a high degree of uncertainty. No kidding! Which again suggests the plan, right? It's all very exciting. Uh, okay, I'm kidding on that. In the end, I think the Fed is going to seize the day and emphasize the need for patience and higher for longer. Now, this morning, U.S. futures are marching higher again. Dow futures up 40, SP is up 4, NASDAQ up 22, and the Russell is down 1. The CME Fed Watch tool has cooled a bit. Those March cuts that they've been screaming about are now expected to begin in May. See how that works? Now look, remember when the 10-year yield shot up to 5%, everyone kept saying the Fed didn't have to do anything because the bond market was doing the work, right? Think higher yields, slowing economy. And so now that the yields have fallen, you have to use the same logic. Declining rates is easing. It's also stimulative, which is not what the Fed needs to happen right now. Unemployment is still at historic lows at 3.7%, suggesting labor market strength, which is why cutting rates is illogical. But hey, that's me. You do you. Now, remember, the market is priced to perfection, right? As if nothing can go wrong. It's pricing in rate cuts, and it's pricing in double-digit EPS growth in 2024. It's pricing in no recession and a soft landing. It's like the days of wine and roses, right? That's a reference to a song released in 1961, the year I was born, recorded by a dozen or so artists, including Frankie, Tony, Shirley, and Perry. Now, as us baby, boom, baby boom, boomers, we know who all those are. The rest of you should just Google it. And for those, uh, and, and, and if you really want to listen to it, I put the link, the YouTube link to that song in my daily written note. You can just click on it and listen to the Days of Wine and Roses. It's actually a great song. Okay, oil. Well, that's not all wine and roses, at least for the Saudis and for OPEC, right? It continues to get hammered, falling 4% yesterday uh, as U.S. and non-OPEC producers continue flooding the market as supply overwhelms demand. Estimates now call for the supply to be about a million barrels per day more than demand. And as long as that's the case, we can expect oil to remain under pressure. And all that job boning by the Saudis did very little to assuage the markets. Now, let's be clear. In my opinion, it's not that demand is slowing. It's just that suddenly supply is growing faster, right? And today, OPEC issues its monthly snapshot. And many are expecting the cartel to suggest even more drastic uh, uh, pressure on prices, right? Uh, that they hope, well, they're, they're going to they're gonna suggest more drastic production cuts that they hope are going to change the narrative. Look, it has broken down significantly. We are now testing the lows of late spring, early summer, right? At $65 a barrel. That's the number to watch. Currently, we're trading at 68.70. A failure at 65 is going to ignite the algos, and then a swift move down to 60 would not be out of the question. 60 takes us back to the summer of 21. 
2021, right? Let's just hope that JoJo gets more aggressive as prices fall so that he can refill the SPR that he emptied. Now, gold, which has come off its recent rally, uh, has tested short-term resistance, the trend line at 1991, and it held. Currently, it's trading at 1997, up about four dollars from yesterday. This is the dollar index hovers around 104, which is just up about 13 cents. The VIX continues to trade lower, suggesting ongoing complacency. Again, the VIXY, V-I-X-Y, is a cheap insurance policy for those that think that they want some insurance. I'm just saying it's cheap. European markets are marching in place, right? This morning trading very tightly around really the unchanged line. Germany announced their 2024 budget while the UK, <clears throat> while the UK economy shrank by three tenths of a percent in October versus the estimate of being flat. Tomorrow we're going to hear from the Bank of England about their monetary policy decision after today when we hear about JJ's monetary policy decision. Now the S&P closed at 46.43 last night, up 21 points as we await today's data. All eyes are going to be focused on JJ and what he has to say as well as what the dot plot has to say. Then expect all kinds of interpretations by the different talking heads about what was said versus what he really meant. So expect to hear things like, I know he said rates aren't going down, but that's not really what he meant, right? I mean, it's comical, but it is what it is. Now look, remember, if you're invested, you're good. You're participating, you're going along, so you're not missing anything. If you have more money to put to work, that's fine. Be patient, don't chase it, let it come to you. And if you're just starting out, you've got time on your side. Understand your risk profile, know where you are in the life cycle. Like I said, I'm happy to discuss. Call me, right? My number's in the thing, 212-381-6194. I'm happy to discuss it with you. Okay, so now, we went through, it's Christmas, we went through the Feast of the Seven Fishers, so now I'm going to just give you some uh, some desserts, some uh, gift ideas, maybe some, uh, um, uh, some side dishes, and today I'm going to give you the candied pecans, right? It's a quick and easy holiday recipe. I got it from my friend Scott, right? It works well as a gift, right? It works, as a, it works well as a gift as well. Right, you know, you, you make them, then you put them in a mason jar, and you put a little bow around it, um, like they do on those Lexus uh, uh, Christmas to Remember commercials, right? Uh, or you can just leave it on your table, have it for whoever comes over, right? You can use them on a range of dishes. You put it in breakfast cereals, you can put it on top of salads, you can put it on top of desserts, you know, ice cream and caramel sauce, or whatever, and the candy pecans is delicious. So over this, you need three large egg whites, one cup of white sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, four cups of pecan halves, right? And a half a cup of melted butter. Lightly whip the egg whites, right? Add the sugar, the cinnamon, the pecans, blend it all, mix it all. Then pour the melted butter on the baking sheet that you're gonna put in the oven. Spread the pecan mix on top of the melted butter, spread it all out, bake it in the oven, uh, uh, turning them like every 10 minutes. Now you have to preheat your oven at 350 degrees. So start by preheating at 350 degrees, so it's nice and not, then put the, the tray in the oven, but you gotta turn them you know, every 10 minutes. So you wanna turn them until, um, uh, until they, they take on a nice uh, brown tone and the, and the egg whites and everything are, are cooked through and it's not still wet, right? You want them to be dry. And then just take them out of the oven, put them on top, let them cool. Once they cool, uh, you can put them in a big bowl, like at Christmas time, leave them on the table. People who just grab them and eat them. You can put them in a, like I said, in a mason jar, use them for cereals, use them for salads, put them in a mason jar, tie a bowl around it, give it away as, you know, Christmas gifts. You get invited to somebody's house for, you know, a Christmas drink. Bring a, bring a, bring a mason jar of the candy pecans. It's always a family favorite and it's always a winner. It's simple to do, not a big deal. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg uh, because it's the thought that counts. Anyway, in any event, it's going to be another nice day in Florida. It's not going to be sunny, sunny. We're kind of having cloudy weather this week, but one way or the other, it's not storms, uh, but it's not a thousand degrees either. So it's actually fine. Uh, until tomorrow, take good care.